this Novak, I'm going to get in trouble with Novak fans because I'm going to be critical here, and then I'm going to defend him on the other side, which seems uh, pretty consistent, and we're gonna fo- I'm going to get one segment of fans that only focus on the criticism and go crazy, and then they're, you know... Another side of the other two guys, they're going to criticize me for, you know, defending him on the other side. But take me back to this Novak Nardi, like the result aside, it's an outlier. Novak is not supposed to be dominating tennis at 37 years old. The fact that he has is nuts. So what all this like what's wrong with him? What's going on? Like he could never win another match. Legacy is entrenched stone. I personally think he'll win more. He'll win more slams too early for panic. Uh, but break down specifically what happened this Novak Nardi match. I we haven't talked about it. What is your take on this stoppage of play? Novak getting mad, kind of throwing a bit of a tantrum, not letting it go uh, at the handshake after a week of great publicity on the front side with the UCLA practices and you know, kind of all the social content. Here we are again. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I'm eager for your interpretation of this because some of this, I give a lot of leeway to athletes in these hot aroused states. And you're in the middle of a match. You've got this neurochemistry. You you know what the deal is. You know, you're you're allowed to lose to Yannick Sinner on an off day in a best of five match in a major. You're playing a lucky loser outside the top 100 who's closer to your kid's age than he is to yours. You've got to do something to shake things up. So. I don't even think this was a legitimate criticism. I think this is just a, a sort of gamesmanship by Novak to try and get in this kid's head. I, I don't think he had much of a leg to stand on. I agree with you too. At some point, you got to let it go. I mean, the fact that it came up at the handshake and after, I mean, I, I'm curious what a former player would make of this. Cause for, from what I saw, Novak basically didn't have a leg to stand on. It was, this wasn't Rublev. I mean, this wasn't something where, he should have been ejected from the tournament. It just seemed oh, a little no. beneath him. I mean, it just seemed beneath him. But I also wonder, look, you get in these desperate situations, you know the guy on the other side of the net doesn't have one one-hundredth of your experience. You've seen enough of these matches to know that one little hinge point moment can completely change the complexion of a match. Maybe you shake things up. This is not unique to tennis. It just seemed awfully I, I just uh, undignified, maybe, ungenerous. It, it just seemed beneath Novak. But... Uh, what what was your take watching? Yeah, you're saying like it's a desperation move. I don't I don't yeah. see any wor- I don't see any world where Novak should ever be desperate against someone ranked 123 uh, in the world. Um, one, the guy didn't stop. Like you watch it, he didn't stop. Like there there's been 27 other clips of where you know, and I hate and, and I hate this because like people turn back the clock 13 years and expect us to remember a certain point. Like, but there are all these things of Novak kind of. Definitely not stopping, but stopping way more than than Nardi did uh, in that point. Nardi did not stop. And even if your opponent stops, that doesn't mean that you have to. Quite the opposite. If they stop, you keep going, you win the point. So it's like to choose to, one, be wrong about what someone else is doing, then make the wrong decision on continuation then make a stink about it to the ref and then mention it to a young player who just had the biggest moment of their lives at the handshake is just an unforced error in, in, in my mind. And this is on the heels of people coming around and like s- just saying it for what it is. He's the, he's the best of all time. This is on the heels of, you know, last week I got upset on the other side because I like he doesn't get enough credit for how friendly he is in the locker room. Doesn't mean you have to agree with every decision that's ever been made, but generally, if you see Novak and you pass and you pass him, and you say, "Hey, man, how's it going?" There's going to be a smile. He's going to be engaged. He's going to be friendly. There is no doubt about that. Okay, so like for this, I just get frustrated because I I'm like, you have all of this goodwill that you're building throughout the week. There's all these social clips going, you know, in, and he probably doesn't care about it. We probably care about it more than he does, which is fine. But like, it's like it has to stop. Like. And it's probably what makes him great is that he's obsessed with these little moments, but like mentioning it to the guy afterwards and like stealing some of his joy or taking some of his joy sucks. Like when he got defaulted at the U S open biggest fluke I've ever seen, there was no choice but to default him, but then he left without doing press, right? You know how much credit he gets if he goes into that press conference and be like, 
It was, it's my fault. It's the most unlucky thing. It was with zero intent. Unlucky, but I put myself at, at Luck's doorstep. Over, done with, never talked about again. We're not talking about it for five days. Uh, okay, so that's my piece uh, on that. Tell me what. Tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think you're wrong. I mean, I think more more charitably, we can say, hey, this is great. He uh, a he is who he is, and yes, there is this huge conflict with him where his tennis is so buttoned up. In some ways, he is so professional, and then he has these absolutely bizarre lapses, these unforced errors, as you put it. The other flip side, more charitably, is saying. Listen, at least he cares. Some athletes get to the end and it's happy to be here. I'll salute the crowd. I mean, it yeah. says something about his frustration that at age 37 almost, he is uh, still disengaged. No, I mean, I think in, in some ways, this is a bit of a familiar pattern where he has, if you're inside tennis, you know he's a good guy. Yep. He's not this tennis devil. He's not the bad boy. He's not Nastasi. He's a fundamentally good person who has these lapses that certainly Roger Rafa did not have and in some ways great he is who he is he doesn't have to be completely consistent I, i'm always just surprised this is so at odds with his tennis which is so crisp and so sharp and so precise and then whether it's the the adria tour or throwing his racket at the olympics he has these every you know every two months he has one of these laps as a sort of the it's like shoot to ladders you play with your with your kids you know you, you do these uh these silly things and you backslide and in the public eye, they see him somehow tainting 20 year old Darty's biggest win at his night, you know, biggest fight of his, his career. And they say, why does he have to be like that? What a jerk. Roger Rafa would never have done that. And he sort of loses the capital that he amassed. But no, I mean, I think, look, it wasn't his proudest moment. It doesn't contaminate his career it's been a slow start to the season i agree with you i think he'll get back to winning i think he's in a very strange i'm out if you saw that tweet i mean that, that is not your average uh that's that's not the conventional statement when you pull out of a tournament yeah. um so i don't know i mean i think he's in a I, I have my own theories on that i think i think he's in a bit of a strange period i do not think this was the proudest moment i suspect next time he sees nardi he's going to congratulate him they'll apologize I think that's true i think that's true with our also. lives yeah, I think that's right. I, I think in the rear view, he would, I think he would probably agree. If you watch a replay, I don't know how you still sit by that opinion, um, frankly, but we don't have that benefit in real time. Uh, listen, I'm I'm as guilty of anyone as like valuing my feelings on court, o court over the over the facts uh, of, of the situation. The Just the frustrating part of covering Novak is you want him to have that like, that unilateral support and and you get you the benefit of the doubt and the whole thing he does the hardest things on earth so well and he like these little things are just and they consistently kind of just fester and and also i just before we close and 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 we're done and we go to we go to james in the next segment also the people who like he was at a game, you know, trading jerseys in a racket with Steph Curry, did a lot of PR, was at every opening the week before Indian Wells. And everyone's like, well, he needs to focus. He doesn't need to do anything. He knows what to do to put himself in position. He is in his, uh, as Taylor Allison Swift would say, he is in his legacy era. He is. That doesn't mean he can't continue to dominate, right? He knows what to do. This loss is going to piss him off. But also, Yes, family's going to take hold. He is 37 years old. He is a maniac, start to finish every day, and has been for 20 years in a good way, right? Like, in a good way. I mean that in a very complimentary face. So, no lay fans, don't go full Twitter finger and annihilate me uh, again and again. Um, but it is this hard thing. But everyone who's like, he shouldn't go to a, a Warriors game after a fluke loss and associate with other people who are like the greatest ever that is dumb that's so dumb like he, he's a grown-up if he wants to go to something he knows what to do like you're telling me you know what's better for him in this moment than he does in regards to tennis and putting himself in position to win that's like pretty arrogant of someone to think right i mean am i wrong on that it's also i think flawed thinking that you know, it's very easy to say they need to focus. This this goes way beyond so Novak. Stupid. This goes beyond tennis. I just, sometimes the best thing you can do 
is take your kids out and go to Chuck E. Cheese. The best thing you can do is hang out with Steph Curry and clear your mind. I, I think we draw this kind of uh, this parallel relationship between success and focus. Yep. Sometimes you need to focus less and not more, and that goes not just for Novak Djokovic, not just for tennis players, but probably probably for all of us. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, but even even with that being said, John, I need us to. I need you to get. I need you to focus, rest up for next week because we're in the zone, man. We're we're doing it. We are in the zone. Rest up. I don't want you to go out to dinner. I don't want you to speak to anyone. Just to make sure you are fully here uh, for next week's episode. I'll tell my wife we'll see each other in eight days. No, 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 no. You didn't understand me. You you're not allowed to talk to her either. Full text. Full focus, yeah. One text, and then hopefully she'll understand. <laughs> Should be great. 